Hi everyone, how are you doing? <laughs> so I'm making my final video of the year. There's like literally like what, four days left? Tuesday, Wednesday, like four days left or three days left of 2020. I know lots of you are excited, but um, so I'm gonna talk about a few things in this video. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is my last video that I made, <laughs> um, so yeah. That last video was, um, you know, I had to be really vulnerable and talk about a story, a story that I've been carrying with me for like a long time. And I just never really shared that openly and talked about it openly with people, mostly because I felt really silly about it and that I was just imagining things. And so... I really had to allow myself to be vulnerable to share that experience um, with everyone and it's like you know some people might be like well who the hell cares about your story why did you feel the need to share that um, but it was just completely cathartic cathartic I can't even speak cathartic cathartic <laughs> cathartic sorry I've had a really long day um, and it was just, the video felt like I felt really silly initially, but I felt really drawn to make it for some reason, even though I've never had any intentions of making a video talking about that. <laughs> so, but for some reason that day I was super like drawn or called to make that video for whatever reason. Um, and I did, and I felt really silly, but I did it. And then I just felt like, amazing after I made that video I felt like I had this huge weight lifted off my shoulder and that I don't care I really don't care what anyone thinks of me or what anyone is thinking or judging or perceiving that to be because it really has no impact on me whatsoever like literally none and you know it makes me think back about the vulnerability piece and I know Brene Brown talks about that a lot and it's interesting because it's like we just don't know how to show up that way as ourselves and be authentic and share like really you know intimate parts of ourselves um with others and it's interesting because, you know, as a child, if you look at children, I look at my nephew, who's going to be five in a few months, uh, three months, two months to be exact. <laughs> and he's just like, you know, he's so wild and free spirited and, and, and so quirky. And I just love him so much. And, you know, children, if you look at them, they just really know how to show up as themselves, how to show up authentically as themselves. That's what children do. They show up authentically as themselves. And then at some point, we have all these experiences and wounding that shape us. And, you know, we learned about the onion in school and all these sub-personalities start layering and layering and layering on top of who our true authentic self is. So we don't show up that way because we, you know, we show up as what people expect us to show up as. We can't do this. We can't act like this. We should be like this. Or we better not do this or something bad's gonna happen like there's so many different things that are gonna make us show up in a different way and not as ourselves authentically and then that's just shrouded with so much shame and guilt lots of shame and guilt that uh inhibit us from showing up as ourselves and feeling safe enough to be vulnerable and you'll know because there will be like little peaks, <laughs> like when it's peeking out. Where, like you might meet someone in your life or multiple people, whether it's in friendships or romantic relationships, where you do feel safe to show up as yourself authentically. And there's, they're going to bring that out of, like, they're going to bring it out in of you. <laughs> bring it out of you. And it's like that when you can feel safe enough and comfortable enough to bring out that part of you that's something really really special so if you find people like that make sure you hold on to them really tight and then trying to find ways to be able to show up that way more why can't we show up like that all the time you know not in like a huge board meeting where there's important decisions to be made I mean sure we can bring some of those elements into that 
But I mean, why can't we show up that way authentically? Why can't we be authentically us and bring that wild child, free spirit energy, like in our everyday life? Why is that not something we can do? Like, at what point did we decide that that's not okay? So how we can do that, obviously, how to show up more um, authentically as ourselves is by, by allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and doing like inner child work will help you to get there and doing things, um, want some energy that helps you be in that child energy is when anytime you do creative type of stuff is using your inner child energy. So, um, you know, that's when you're drawing and painting or crafting, um, singing, dancing, playing an instrument, anything that is like creative energy is your inner child. Um, so doing more of that will help you obviously doing therapy, doing inner child meditations and spiritual work. All of those types of things will help you to connect with yourself in order to show up authentically as yourself and become more vulnerable and trying to like remove those layers of sub personalities and wounding that we have that cover who we really, really are inside. And which brings me to the most fun part of the end of the year. I say fun because I'm being very, very sarcastic. <laughs> New Year's resolutions, <laughs> because we all know that everyone loves to set some New Year's resolutions. But I mean, this year has been quite difficult already as it is. So, I mean, I think that I speak for everyone when I say we should like just chuck the whole like idea of New Year's resolutions out the window because I just don't think they're needed. I feel like when you start the year off with this idea that you need these things to be better, I think you're kind of already setting yourself up for failure when you are already the best. You are the best and most perfect version of yourself right now already as you are. You don't need to achieve that or this or this or anything to be the best version of yourself. You are the best version of yourself right now. That doesn't mean that we can't aspire to want to work on ourselves and heal or manifest things like that. But a lot of times resolutions are, they kind of are set around with things that are not good enough with ourselves and you know, you're starting off a new year with more of that shame and guilt around yourself. So you're really setting yourself up for failure. So let's do away with that. <laughs> and we can start off the year with intentions instead. And one of my favorite things to do, which I sh I'll share with you, is on New Year's Eve, I write a list of things that I was grateful for in that year. And then I write in a separate page all the things that I really want to happen for the new year and I really want to manifest like think about it like a wish list or um I guess a wish list but it's like things that I really want to achieve or um attain or manifest so I set those two lists what I'm grateful for and I'm really happy for the year the current year and what I really want for the new year and I just write those and um it's really puts you in this first of all the gratitude is a really great way to like propel yourself forward by being in that space of gratitude um and then setting intentions with that using that energy of gratitude will help you to really feel out what you really want and the things that are for you and kind of navigate towards the things that you really desire that um, you know, that you really want in your life, the things that you want to add into your life and those types of goals and desires and things like that. So it's a good idea if you want something to do for New Year's. Um, so I'll write, I'll start off with my list, my gratitude list. I'll say three things that I'm really grateful for this year. So <clears throat> the first thing that I'm grateful for is that this year has brought about so many changes and abundance in my life and I'm honestly really um I'm really grateful for that because there's been like some good things um happening and 
good changes and I'm always having always having what I need and things like that so I'm really grateful for that and I've been in places in my life and times in my life when I've been without and so I'm in a place now where I am I'm okay and I'm I'm really happy with the where like where things are going in the direction that it's going and so I'm very grateful for that. That is one thing I'm really grateful for this year. The second thing I'm very grateful for is the lessons and insight that I've had this year. Now, I know that this year has been a complete dumpster fire for so many of us. Um, you know, my experiences have been really incredibly difficult and challenging. Um, and I know that we're all going through a collective dark night of the soul and I've been through multiple dark night of the souls but this year specifically has been massive for so many of us and i really want to just acknowledge all the lessons and the insight that i've kind of attained or learned or just i all i've gotten from the year and i'm grateful for that because i've learned so much and i'm really grateful for that and uh, so much, so many times we look at the negative <clears throat> as a dark story, as negative and as a bad thing. And I, you know, as you, if you've watched my other things, I always talk about how the darkness is not negative and that <clears throat> being able to be in a place of dark and really loving that and honoring it and allowing it, just allowing it to be and exist is so important and crucial to your growth and your healing because the darkness is just as important as the light and having the darkness is the contrast to the light and it's not bad, it's not negative, it's just different. It's the opposite of what this is and there's so much goodness that can be in that as well. In the darkness if you can just sit there and allow it and to really appreciate what is in that space and so this year has really shown me to like it's really shown me to uh, how to honor that and to allow learning how to allow what is and you know as a Virgo <laughs> as a Virgo sun sign and ascendant, uh, my rising sign, you know, um, being very controlling. It's like, I feel like it's just my programming, but um, learning how to like not be controlling and let go of the reins and just allow things to unfold how they're supposed to. And that if they're not going the way you planned, that maybe that's just the way it's supposed to go. Maybe it's supposed to go a different way and to just ease up on the reins and just let it be how it's supposed to be and that was like something I've been kind of learning gradually over the last little time but not as much as I've learned it this year and so I'm grateful for the lessons and the insight that I've had this year and then the last thing that I'm really really grateful for is that I did not have <laughs> um I didn't have like that hollow ache in my heart at Christmas time this year and that was like a really big one for me and I just felt really really happy about that um, because probably for the last decade or maybe forever I don't even know I've always had this like hollow in my heart as if I was missing out on something and not maybe not feeling whole or complete or something and I noticed this Christmas you know, I'm always like waiting before I've always been like waiting for something to happen, something to come and bring me joy and just this waiting for someone else. You know, maybe not that I was waiting, but maybe this whole like programming of waiting for something else to happen to save me or to make it better, or to bring me love and joy and happiness and all that stuff. And just like because when you don't feel whole and complete on your own, that's what happens. You feel hollow and you're just constantly seeking out these things externally to bring you that joy and happiness and so for the first time ever I did not have that this Christmas and it was the most remarkable 
thing ever, and I'm going to take that as my Christmas miracle. Because it's probably the best gift that I've, I could have received ever. And, um, you know, I've done so much healing work in the last few years uh, to be where I am today. And this year has been, like, so incredibly challenging. <laughs> and um, I just want to say, like, you know, it's one thing to say affirmations. Um, you know, I'm whole and complete. I'm whole and complete. Um, but it's another thing entirely to really feel that and to um, carry that vibration. And it's just, it's such a lovely thing. Not to say that you shouldn't say the affirmations because the affirmations are going to help you to get there. They're part of the healing work. And I've been using those affirmations for a long time now that I'm whole and complete on my own as I am. And really just kind of marrying those, your own feminine and masculine energies within and your yin and yang energy and coming together on your own and doing that inner work and healing, inner child work. And it was just a really wonderful um, realization when I felt that and I came to that um, discovery, I guess, on Christmas and it was just really nice and... Uh, yeah. So I'm just really happy about that and I'm really grateful about that and that's probably my most beautiful thing and experience that I'm grateful for this year. And so I refuse to look at 2020 as <laughs> the dumpster fire that it was and I'm going to take away all the good bits and pieces of it uh, and I really hope that you'll do the same. Because you're going to need that energy to carry you forward into better uh, and more triumphant uh, times ahead, which will be there. But you want to just kind of arm yourself with that really good energy. So anyway, that is my final video of the year. I wanted to share all that information, which I hope you found helpful. If you didn't, that's okay. <laughs> but what kind of things do you like to do for New Year's in terms of, like, do you have any rituals or... I don't know, any special things that you like to do on New Year's to start off the new year that makes you, that you feel as a good way to bring in the new and to celebrate the old. Like, what are some things that you like to do or that you would like to do? So, I want to take this time to wish all of you a very, very wonderful new year. I know that it's been a trying, difficult time for so many of us this year but know that it wasn't in vain and that there has been there's purpose for all of this and that you are so much stronger and think about all the things that you have learned and how much light is ahead of us now because it's always darkest before the dawn and I have no doubt in my mind that things will get better I I just know they will and that there are some pretty stellar things up ahead. So stay uh, hopeful uh, as uh, one of my favorite lines or from the movie, uh, well it's my favorite, one of my favorite movies is Hope Floats. So I just love that line, hope floats and hope always floats. So stay hopeful, stay uh, in your heart chakra and vibrate the love energy and try to be vulnerable and let your guard down and show up more as yourself and let's all show up as ourselves and let's just kind of extend our you know energy out to everyone else so that we can all feel safe to show up as ourselves maybe we can do that and give each other a little bit of that magic uh, this New Year's. Anyways, Happy New Year. I wish you so much wonderful, beautiful prosperity, abundance, love, and magic in the year of 2021. God bless you all. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Happy New Year.